Hi everyone, over the last year or so, I've been slowly but surely embracing minimalist living. It's had quite a few surprising and positive results, and it doesn't involve throwing away everything you own. We'll talk about these boxes a bit later on. Today, I wanna to talk about seven benefits I've discovered from minimalist living, and how some simple ideas and changes dramatically improve how we can be intentional and stress-free about our work, as well as our lives as a whole. Let's take a tour into the world of minimalist living for creatives. Hi everyone, welcome to Better Creating. If you've not been here before, my name's Simon and I'm trying to simplify creative life for me and for you on this channel. So there's loads more videos on productivity, creativity, and ways to be more intentional and stress-free in whatever it is that you're up to. Simple living, the simple living phenomenon is something that I started researching, as I say, a couple of years ago. And uh, it's a trend that is, was increasingly growing and growing around uh, the world in its popularity and I was seeing more and more people and friends living more simply and seeming to be calmer, clearer-headed, happier in their lives and feeling like they'd made a really positive change. I admit, for a long time, I thought minimalism was just about white walls, owning nothing, sleeping on a blanket on the floor, drinking coffee and eating hummus, but it's so much more than that. I do like coffee. You probably notice I wear the same t-shirt every day on the channel and yeah. I do like hummus. Just leave me alone and stop judging me. I wear these t-shirts so it's easier to cut b-roll together. It makes everything easier to use later on. And just, okay, let's move on. Amazingly, we managed to move apartments this year in 2020. And when we did it, I found I was ready to take it a bit further and hold on to even less. What I've come to realize over the last year is that minimalist living is really about embracing a set of values and being more intentional about where you focus your time, energy and attention. Clearing space, literally and figuratively, to be able to focus on the things that add value, meaning and joy into your life. And to quote Greg McEwen, founder of another overlapping movement, Essentialism, eliminate as much as possible everything else. So here are my seven benefits to minimalist living and how they can help you in your life and work. Making less decisions. Minimalist living has meant that there are basically less decisions to make every day. And so because of that, I'm much more focused and productive. You might have heard of the story of Mark Zuckerberg wearing the same clothes every day. Well, you don't need to go that far to get the similar advantages. Decluttering my wardrobe and my things has eliminated the need to make thousands of extra tiny decisions about them each day. That means I'm more productive. My output over time is increased without feeling like I'm having to try any harder. Minimalist living has helped me just get up and move on to the things I really want to focus on. It's made space for what Cal Newport calls deep work in his book, Deep Work Rules for Focus Success in a Distracting World. Check it out. Two, feeling calmer. I feel calmer now because our apartment is calmer. There is less chaos, less to deal with. So now cleaning our apartment is so much easier, even enjoyable. Freelance creative life has enough stress and anxiety and unknowns and pressures and deadlines as it is uh, for us to have that same chaotic, unknown, messy, stressful space to live in just adds to that feeling. It's been one of the most helpful things to be able to come back to, leave or work in a space that is calm and clear. Even more interestingly, simple living has actually made me build a habit of making the bed in the morning. It's one of the best habits that I have developed because it means that every morning you feel that sense of achievement and purpose the moment you wake up and it sends you off into your day. Try it out if you don't do it. Benefit three, getting distracted less. Did you know that the average American spends five and a half hours a day on their digital devices? That is scary. Um, sorry, I, such a bad joke. I used to spend hours procrastinating and avoiding the challenges of actual creative work because there were so many. Um, digital and real distractions available to me in my life. By simplifying decluttering, both physically in the rooms that, and, and the spaces around you, your environment, and those digital spaces, I found that I want to work more, I can stay in my work more easily, uh, and that actually um, I get more value out of the things I'm putting my attention into. Minimalism and essentialism help us organize our time with more clarity get clearer and do the hard work, to be honest, about what is essential in our lives. 
Um, you might want to check out my other video on digital decluttering. There's a couple of really practical tools in there of escaping the draw of social media to be able to free you um, from uh, distraction and take you further in what it is you want to be doing. But sorry, one sec, my friend's just made a fantastic comment on Facebook. Benefit number four, having more time. Keeping a simple home also means that there are less barriers in the way of actually getting things done. That might be keeping you from creating, but it could also be keeping you from just an achievable morning routine. If you have to clean your kitchen before you make coffee, it just takes longer. As a result, there is less wasted time, less additional tasks we start adding to our lives and more time to be doing nothing or the things you enjoy and the work that you want to get done with purpose. Morning routines are often scuppered by all the wasted time you spend doing all the little bits and bobs around a task that you actually want to be doing. Minimalism and essentialism for that matter are about, for me, taking control of your life so you have more space to enjoy it and let go. I have discovered that I am what Gretchen Rubin calls an obliger. I don't know if you recognise this, I spend a lot of my time going, oh yeah, I'll help you with that. Someone asks something or a new idea comes up and I go, yeah, great, I'll, I'll jump on that task for you, no problem. Now that's positive in one sense. The negative of that, of course, is that you never actually stick to your guns and follow through on the things that matter. It means we're far more scattergun and not as effective in getting stuff done. Now these ideas for minimalism and essentialism have meant that I have been able to say no more easily, focus my time effectively, and actually that has been a game changer for productivity and creativity in my life. If anything, I've got more time off, so win-win. Number five, saving money. I'm saving money. There's more money in my wallet. Amazing. I'm saving money because I f I'm feeling less of a need to buy things to make me happy. I'm feeling less of a need to accumulate things in order to satisfy you know, some of my needs in life. It's been one of the hardest shifts to make and you know the draw towards Amazon remains strong. Nonetheless, it's meaning I have a bit more cash, I spend less time being distracted by shopping, I am able to be more selective about the work I'm taking because I have a little bit more money in my bank account, more joy from the things I do bring into my life because I'm being intentional about them. You get the idea, right? It's all connected. Benefit six, carry less weight. Minimalist living helps us carry less weight. Everything is easier when we're at ease. Let me explain. Minimalism asks us to be honest about our lives, what's around us, what really matters, and what makes us happy. I didn't realise the emotional weight of things until they were gone. I had a tonne of junk up in the loft in our previous apartment above our heads, and I wasn't sorting it out. Now perhaps more significantly, about 11 years ago I lost my dad and for about 10 years I've had all of his stuff above my head as well and I've not been dealing with it. Of course we have blocks to these things, I perhaps took a little bit too long to sort it out but it hung over me and when I finally went to process it and go through the stuff, loads of it, yeah, I got rid of it, didn't need it and I was able to keep and curate a lovely little box of memories, put them under the bed, clear all the rest of the stuff out of that loft and it no longer hung over me. By doing that, you clear that weight off you. Um, there's even a guitar and a rather lovely hat that occasionally I dare to get out and try. <laughs> so, good. Don't underestimate the power of small practical changes like clearing out junk that actually you've been avoiding clearing out to make you feel genuinely lighter and more present in the moment. So, hang on a minute. Why is that useful to me as a creative person? I'm able now to be more emotionally and personally open to the projects and ideas that I'm engaging with. That is so valuable because it allows you to dare to go places with your work that you may not have otherwise gone. Seven, be around more things that make you happy. And as much as possible, eliminate everything else. We have a finite amount of space and time to exist in. So let's do everything we can to make it perfectly tailored to support our values and the people we love. This can take some deep consideration to identify. I really recommend starting with something like the What's Essential podcast as a way into this process. What you shouldn't do is just throw everything that you own away. That brings me back to explaining what this line of um, boxes of stuff acting currently as our TV stand actually are. 
they are full of books. I love books, I love plays, I love uh, textbooks on creativity and art books and all of that. It's probably my biggest habit on Amazon and there's nothing wrong with that per se. Now when we moved house, we've yet to fully unpack these, I probably got rid of about half of all the books I owned. Uh, but I didn't get rid of more of that because actually, I was like, no, actually I really want to keep them. They bring me joy, they make me happy, they add texture to my life. Now the real benefit of minimalism in this case was sifting through them and what I chose to keep also involved me reconnecting and knowing what I had. So a lot of the stuff there I just didn't remember I had. Now I've reconnect with ideas, plays, possibilities for projects. So that's what those boxes are and that's why they're staying. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe if you aren't already, hit that like button below and check out these videos on more stuff around productivity, creativity and mindset. So it turns out minimalism doesn't mean we have to live like a monk, unless we want to. Bye.